Awesome. Well, thank you, Luke. Um, welcome, everybody. You can't really see it today, but I am wearing my Oceans of Possibilities t-shirt here today. I've got the Penguins uh, by Sophia Blackall. And on your screen, you can see some of the posters um, that she illustrated for this coming summer. Um, can't wait until we're able to show off her art uh, across this country and across our island nations and territories um, for everybody who uses CSLP. A quick reminder that in the um, chat box, you can select everyone if you want all attendees to be able to read your messages. You don't have to send them just to the panelists, but choose everyone. But if you have questions, Adrian's gonna be monitoring for that um, in our Q&A box. So that is available. And we're gonna get started. So here's our info. Thank you, Luke, for the kind introduction. And we wanted to touch on today just a few different topics. We only have um, about an hour and we're going to try to push through these, but we're really here to ignite you all today. Part of the thing that makes uh, Collaborative Summer Library Program so awesome is that it is truly collaborative. So it starts with the manual. Um, we have manual committees. They work really hard on getting those put together for you. So we're going to talk about that. Um, we also have inclusion committees and child well-being committee, um, social media committees, so all those great things. Um, but we, we're we going to take a deeper dive into the ocean today and talk about some additional programming that could supplement some of the things that are in the manual already. Um, but we know we have a lot of landlocked states as well. So. Um, we're going to offer you a little glimpse at, you know, if you don't live by the ocean, why this theme is still a very important one to share this summer with your families. And we're going to talk about partnerships, displays, and we'll get through to, um, to our Q&A at the end there. So we wanted to remind you to take a dip into that CSLP manual. So these manuals are compiled and edited by a lot of your peers. CSLP seeks input from library staff across the country and our island nations. So the manual committee is made up of volunteers from public libraries. Be sure to think about volunteering yourself. Um, if you have ideas you wanna share, there's always a call for ideas, but we also have calls at the end of uh, the summer, typically, for volunteers to serve on committees. So do um, consider doing that yourself in the coming year, if you're not already a, a committee member. So um, there are six chapters this year for Oceans of Possibilities. The themes are Discover Treasure, Explore New Depths, Seven Seas, Infinite Stories, Our Blue Planet, An Ocean of Wonders, and Uncharted. So you can stick to one, you know, overall theme, the Oceans of Possibilities, all summer long, but these six chapters can either give you six different weeks worth of, of, of sub-themes, um, or you can stagger each little kind of sub-theme throughout each week. Um, you know, that's totally up to you. It, th that manual is yours to mix and match and, and do what you want with it. So we'll talk more about the manual at the end of this presentation. But right now, I just wanted to mention that the collaborative, collaborative Summer Library Program includes represent, representation. Luke, I have your word problem that you had earlier today. <laughs> um, but all 50 states um, are represented as well as the District of Columbia, American Samoa, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Federated States of uh, Micronesia, Guam, and the Minera Marina Islands. So all the public libraries in member states and island territories, those are all, um, all have access to the manual. However, we have state representatives that serve you and they choose what type of manual you will be getting in your state. So you'll either have access to a paper manual, you know, a printed out copy. It's quite thick. I actually have it here with me today. This is our beautiful manual. Or um, you'll have a USB port. And 
many states have moved to the online manual as well. If you have the paper, the USB, um, do not fret, you will also get access to the uh, online manual. And if you're not a member of CSLP or a territory, you can join as a public library. So you just have to contact Luke. Um, and I'm hoping that Adrian can pop Luke's email as well as the state rep um, link into the chat box. And then finally, we also have tutorials on how to navigate that online manual. And I'm, I have the opportunity here, I'll just pop that in the chat for you. So be sure to check out Luke's tutorials. And if you've uh, heard from Luke today, you know that he's quite entertaining. So check those videos out. All right, so next we wanna talk briefly on inclusion tips. And we ask that you remember to keep inclusion in mind when you're designing your summer programming. Um, we also have in the manual some tips and adaptations for many of the activities. So you make sure you look for that tip box on the activity pages. Um, so for sensory time, for example, engage multiple senses with activities. Um, you can do that easily. So if you're you're going to have a painting craft, you can add texture to that by adding sand to that paint, or you could add a scent. So if you're painting with purple, maybe that's a lavender oil that you drop into that purple paint for, for kids to smell. Make sure you use toxic free. <laughs> Sometimes those fingers do end up in their mouths. So um, for promotions, don't forget to use person first language. Person first language emphasizes that the person comes before the disability. So for example, you're gonna say person who is blind or people with spinal cord injuries. You're not going to put the um, description before the person. Use clear font, 14 plus size, and that inclusive language such as people of all abilities are welcome or notify us in advance if alternative formats are required. You can see here from Bloomfield Township uh, Public Library here in Michigan, uh, they use this uh, symbol on the, all their flyers uh, to say, please contact us if you need any additional accommodations. So with that all said, I'm gonna hand it over to Deb. Okay. So as um, Kathy said, um, the following activities that we'll be talking about are not necessarily in the manual. Uh, we trust that you're looking at that closely for um, your program planning. Um, we're just going to take a little deeper dive into some additional ideas and themes. So just going back a little bit about joining a committee um, this last year, I had the pleasure of being the chairperson for the early literacy um, manual um, committee, and it was a lot of fun. If you have um, if you enjoy programming, um, I really encourage you to join one of the manual committees. It's, it, it is a lot of fun. So here we have some ideas and when you um, access our slides, um, you can see a lot of these um, have the clickable links to the actual um, activity instructions or um, recipes such as the Taste Safe Kinetic Sand. Okay, so I actually made some of this yesterday just to try it out. <laughs> and it's more like slime right now, but when I made it, it actually was very much like that kinetic sand that you, you know, buy at the stores. And I, I made mine blue. You do not need a kitchen to do it. Uh, you just need water and a mixing bowl and, and um, a few other um, dry items. Um, it is uh taste safe i tasted it not that good so i think if they do put a little in their mouth i don't think you're going to have a problem with them eating a whole lot of it <laughs> but it is safe um so the idea here is and i've done this in the past have programs making these type of items you know such as the sand slime or um sea foam or things like that. It, it's a whole lot of fun. 
Then the animal movement cards, I printed those off. So here you can see, here's the one that says a shark. And then it has a shark swims in the ocean. What you can do is you can print this off on plain paper like I did and have them color it. You could print it off on colored cardstock and um, distribute them around the library and say, oh, find the blue shark, find the purple shark. I'd also like to promote process art as well. Um, it really engages your children's creativity. Um, everybody gets it right because there's no wrong way of doing it. Um, the adults are on the side. Um, you know, I know a lot of times, <laughs> you know, we're putting together, you know, craft activities for the adults. <laughs> so. <laughs> when you're doing process art, uh, give them, give the parents their own little process art kit. <laughs> and it's fun for everybody. So they can experiment with science, um, which is mixing colors and materials, um, math, and build exec they build executive function when they're planning their own projects. Next slide. All right, so back to me. <laughs> I don't know if you all noticed, but Deborah has a pretty awesome hat on right there. <laughs> um, so some children's STEM ideas. Again, we want to point you back to that manual. That is your best resource um, for the Oceans of Possibility themes. But um, we came up with a few ideas. Uh, how do whales stay warm? I don't know if anyone's done this before. But um, you start with that bucket of ice water and you have the kids put their hands or fingers into that ice water, see how cold it is, maybe how long they can keep that finger in. Then they're going to pop on a plastic glove and one of those fingers of the plastic glove, they're going to coat that with Crisco. Crisco. That represents blubber. And once they do that, put that, that finger back into the water and then see, compare it maybe with other fingers that are in the glove at how cold and how long you can stay it in, you know, what, what are the differences that they're experiencing in temperature, how long can they keep that in, that sort of thing. Um, that is a great activity. And um, ocean zones. So this actually is in our manual. Um, if you go to page 90, um, there's some great activities around ocean zones. Uh, there's also the idea about, um, and, and the links of course are all on our slides and those slides are gonna be up on the CSLP website. But um, try to have kids sort the anal animals by what zone they might belong in. This could even become an interactive display. Um, you can maybe use a magnet board or felt pieces, have them move around and guess, and then maybe have a, a, uh, the correct answers underneath a covered piece of paper or something they could peek up and see how they did with that. But um, something to consider for the summer, you know, hosting a STEM fair. Uh, you can do all these activities as one big event, one big day, different tables, different stations outside, or maybe you will spread them around um, throughout the summer at weekly programs. And next, so this, I have to say, um, I do watch our social media page and on the Facebook uh, CSLP official programming group, Shark Week came up. Um, and that's going to happen this coming summer. It's usually in July or August. Discovery Channel has not announced their dates yet, but it's a week long grouping of shark related episodes. If you haven't seen the, anything about Shark Week before, it is a real hit. So um, definitely pair something up with Shark Week. Keep an eye on those calendars. Hopefully they'll announce the dates uh, this coming January or February, but we'll see. Um, so here's some cool ideas. My favorite one <laughs> is the pool noodle. Those are pretty, pretty affordable. Um, you can cut them up into, you know, a whole bunch of sections and make a little shark head for that. Um, also, if you want to do a little snack, you can try doing some shark gummies in blue jello. And um, here the tiptoe fairy 
uh, suggested even like putting like little nerds at the bottom to look like the coral reefs. So lots of fun. Um, all those links are going to be up on the website too. So make sure you plan for a shark week because it's going to be popular. And I would say this probably applies to all ages. <laughs> Deborah, back to you. Yes. So teens have always, or young people have always uh, long been leaders and catalysts in important uh, movements. So um, here we have a link to um, a Greenpeace page that includes a variety of ideas and videos of what teens are doing to clean the oceans near them. Um, you can visit their website for ideas on what teens who live near and far from oceans can do. And also Beach Cleanup Week is July 1st through the 7th. So that might be something you could tie into your programming. If you have a beach, be it a lake or even a, a river beach. I put a little note down at the bottom of this. It says entice team participation by offering community service hours. Um, this is something that has come up a lot in um, our teen discussions and a lot of schools require um, community service hours for graduation. Um, and so what a great way to, instead of having them just come in and do some dusting, which I mean is helpful too, but um, have them come and um, actually run um, some programs in your library during the summer. And the next All right. <laughs> um, just trying to click all the buttons at once. Uh, just a reminder, um, we'll say it again, these links are going to be with our slides posted on the CSLP website with the recording to this presentation. So don't worry about clicking and opening everything right now in the chat. We'll get those out to you. Um, so adults, and, and actually I'll make a note in the chat, we do, we can't see your faces and we can't do breakout rooms today, but we're hoping in the chat, you can start to plug in some ocean, ocean related programming that you're, you're planning on this summer, or you're thinking about doing, because um, we wanted this session to be interactive as possible um, using the chat box there. So make sure you select everyone in the two box to post to all attendees. Um, and share your ideas while while Deb and I are talking. <laughs> um, so for adult programming, this this can get a little trickier, right? Um, and we know we have some adult librarians on here uh, looking to plan their summers. So we came up with a few extra ideas that um, weren't in the manual. Uh, one of them is ocean sound therapy. So explore um, ocean sounds like whale calls and um, the waves. Uh, everybody loves a good like sleep app. So Insight Timer is free, but we were thinking maybe you could bring in a meditation coach. Um, it's a great chance to partner um, and and work with somebody in your community. And there's also a passive way you could do this. You could set up an iPad for adults with a headset and have a whole bunch of different sounds like the whale calls and, and um, such download it to that and they can sit back and have a little peaceful moment um, of listening and explore some different sounds um, and i just saw somebody post it um, something about mermaids and i was just thinking i wonder if there's like any cool mermaid recordings out there <laughs> or dolphin calls maybe <laughs> well, you, um, you can't really see it but i have a whole mermaid collection on my shelves behind here. oh awesome <laughs> maybe if somebody you know, they could share their collection of mermaids That'd be display. Great. There's a display idea. <laughs> there you go. Um, other crafts could be like water inspired. We've got pictured here. Uh, do it yourself fountains. Those are pretty easy to do. Um, and you can maybe partner with a local greenhouse or, or something to get some terracotta plant pots, perhaps donated or at a discount. Um, soap making, watercolor, so much fun. Uh, for your adults. So definitely look into that. Um, one thing I didn't think, I think maybe Deb or Adrian thought of this one, but water uh, dousing. Um, and that's, you know, when you use the stick and you go out and you find fresh water underground. 
right? Um, there's a whole history around that. There's links on our slides and that will be shared out um, on our website, but um, you can offer a history of water dousing and then you can make it into a kind of a cool craft. And I, I know like my mom would love to do, to make one of these water dousing sticks and you can clean out your craft closet um, while you're doing it. And, um, and then they can display that in their homes or they can go out and try water dousing for themselves. I'll also uh, suggest that the Naval History and Heritage um, has, has live virtual webinars. Um, you could cross promote those or even host a viewing party. Um, coming up in December, they've got Brothers Down. It's the Pearl Harbor and the fate of many brothers. Um, that's gonna be available on their site. So I'm sure in the months ahead, um, for June, July, August, they'll have a lot of great offerings that you can cross promote or, or host that viewing party. And finally, I'm actually gonna hand it back to Deb to talk about, um, you know, we talked about everyone, everyone loves to bring in authors to talk or have book discussions. And Deb had an interesting book she was gonna share with you. Okay, it's actually um, on the a slide <laughs> as we go forward, but, um, the hidden messages in water, um, Masaru Amoto, um, that is, it's about how molecular structure of water is changed by the presence of human consciousness. So, you know, it's positive energy impacts everything. Uh, you know, we've all heard the, the studies of about if you talk nice to a plant, it will thrive. But if you say bad things to it every day, that it, it dies. And it, it's the same idea with the um, structure of um, the molecular structure of water. And so positive energy impacting us all. Okay, so, but we don't live by the ocean and a lot of us on here do not. There are still many great ideas in the manual. Um, the friendship is a treasure and the chapter our big blue planet has um, quite a few ideas, but we would like to offer some more. So why is even though we don't live by the ocean, why is it still important to all of us, no matter where we live? Um, the ocean covers 72% of our planet and it regulates our climate and weather. It also supplies over half of our oxygen. And as you can see from um, this graphic, um, it really um, pushes our economy, um, responsible for food, medicine, and we all know about recreation and transportation as well. And there's a link to uh, more about why the ocean is important to us all here on this slide. All right, so uh, who else got into the whole craze of the rubber stamps, rubber stamping? I have, I, I don't even want to tell you how many I, I own. Okay, well, maybe it's time to dig those out of the closet and use them because they're great in um, water tables to stamp either letters or um, little, little turtles or whatever you have stamps of. Um, Art, you can experiment with um, the wet versus dry. Uh, we've talked about foam a couple times. <laughs> that, that would be fun no, no matter where you are. Um, again, pool noodles, cheap. We all love going to the dollar store. You can get them there um, and, and they're great for their fine motor skills as well. Um, I mentioned the Do Unto Otters book here by Laurie Keller. Um, it's not just a book about manners. Um, but you can use it to um, talk about otters themselves, um, make little puppets, um, it's a lot of fun. Who doesn't like cute little otters? <laughs> and then you, here we have a picture of um, doll bath time, which um, is great for um, little girls and little boys because it teaches them how to treat babies. Next slide. All right, back to me. So um, I'm seeing so many great ideas in the chat. Um, and this is really what um, we're about, right? You know, we have a great manual. It's a great starting off point. 
um, we've got Facebook group, we've got Pinterest, you know, um, but just having that time to dream and to interact with each other um, is, is really fun. So make sure you're using that everyone um, tool in your chat box. So it's not just going to panelists because we want to make sure everyone's able to see um, your suggestions. All right. Um, so some more children's ideas. Um, you can see on your screen, we've got a few ideas up here. Uh, I would uh, highly suggest uh, a bubble fest. So uh, in our last session, uh, they were sharing the foam party. Hadn't thought about the foam party, but what if you had a foam and bubble fest together? I think that would be so much fun. Um, so have a, have stations that let you make bubbles, um, let you make your own bubble wands, have stations that have different size bubble wands. You can do the hula hoop in the kiddie pool where they can pull the bubble up and be standing in a bubble. Um, just have a great big celebration out on your library lawn or at a local park uh, that you might be partnering with. So I think a bubble fest would be great fun. Uh, you can create creative writing uh, opportunities. So pictured here, we actually got this off of the Facebook group um, for CSLP and uh, last summer for Tales and Tales, someone uh, wrote a sweet little book about um, one of their favorite fishes in the library aquarium. So I know a lot of you libraries have your fish tanks. Um, that might be a great opportunity to do a creative writing um, practice with them. You could also, um, on honoring the ocean and waterways, um, that's page 121 in your manual. There is an ocean day in the summer, and it's also a Japanese holiday. Uh, now it's known um, in America as Marine Day, but uh, you know you could do some neat lanterns and pair them with a haiku contest. So take a look at the manual for that. Um, and then there's some fun like fresh versus salty. I know here in Michigan, uh, we have freshwater lakes. We are the Great Lakes state. So here we are promoting oceans of possibility in a fresh lake state. Um, some fun times to like, compare freshwater fish versus salty. What types of animal adaptations are needed to live in salt versus fresh? fresh. Um, where do your waterways lead anyway? We lead through all the Great Lakes and then out the St. Lawrence into the ocean. Um, so it's a great opportunity to bring awareness uh, in your landlocked states as well as your Great Lakes states. All right, so tweens and teens, a few ideas here as well. Um, you know, possibility programs, help them, encourage them to dream big. We've had a rough couple of years. Um, it's been really challenging times uh, for everyone, but our tweens and teens are struggling. Uh, so encourage some dreaming. Uh, in our manual, page 124, um, there's a great uh, dreams as vast as the seven seas uh, program planned out with vision boards. Uh, I was thinking about watershed volunteer opportunities, you know, have them dream big, have them collaborate and work with a local watershed to get training and, and do water testing. They're always seeking volunteers to do that. Um, water plants, uh, that's pretty fun where you could do um, some little uh, repurposing of fish tanks or using jars and and having them grow their own water plants and watch them and take them home. Um, also, don't forget book trailers. Uh, I, there's a link and this will be provided with the slides, uh, but uh, like a how to film book trailers, be a fun contest uh, to propose to your teens uh, to pick a book um, and perhaps you'll put out ocean related books or water related st theme stories and uh, film some book trailers and you could even make it into a contest and uh, a preview night. You can do, you know, a red carpet night for their families to view their book trailers. Um, lots of fun 
to go in that direction. And then, of course, we have some links to readers, readers theater scripts as well here. More ideas. Oh, my goodness. So um, cork board races. Uh, that is um, you're going to have to ask your adults maybe to help you out with this and collect some wine corks, um, but they can use hot glue guns and they can cut the corks and they can build their own boats. And then if you have um, maybe fresh water nearby you or you can create a little um, little river, um, not a river, but, you know, a little tub inside the library and race those boats with fans or um, see who sinks or swims. <laughs> uh, so that'd be a lot of fun. And I'm sorry, I'm noticing that my slide, my pictures covered up some of our our words on the slide, but um, a craft closet clean out idea, you know, our our tweens and teens love to get creative. So um, set out all the materials and just challenge them to create their own sci fi ocean sea creature. And then you can have a display. Um, they can put them out um, and model them in in the library of this those sci fi creatures that they create. And then, of course, there's shark week. So you know, maybe they can make sharks for Shark Week too. And don't forget those role playing games. Uh, we have a whole activity in the manual on page 144 around role playing games, uh, escape rooms, also cosplay. And I think that'd be a great fun time for them to plan out, you know, empower your teens to plan out their own cosplay and create their costumes that are um, water related and host that party. It could even become uh, your finale celebration too. Okay, so here we are to adults. How about exploring your local mythical creatures such as Bigfoot? Or I lived for four years on Lake Champlain in Vermont, and I guarantee you every day I looked for Champ. <laughs> uh, during the summer, um, get outside. Have those um, book clubs, um, a kayaking book club, or meet at the beach. How about some shipwreck presentations, uh, metal detecting programs? Some metal detectors um, are able to be used underwater. Next slide. All right, so we're going to be moving on to partnerships. So if you didn't have a chance to see the previous session on um, your asset mapping in your community. Um, that would be that now would be a good time to start doing that. So when it comes time to have your summer reading program, you can um, have a better idea of who to to get together with to um, partner with for your summer program. Because we know when we partner, um, we share our assets and it makes for a much better an easier program on everyone. And I will give an example. Um, for over 10 years, I was a small rural library director in northeastern Vermont. Shout out Canaan, Vermont. <laughs> um, and for quite a few of those years, um, I partnered with the local small K through 12 school. They held like a four to six week um, like summer camp. Um, in the summer, and they let me do the programming for one whole week. So I had library programming. And so they had one week that they didn't have to worry about programming. And I had um, all most of the, the community children <laughs> come to my library program that year. And I also had um, their um, educators and um, camp counselors to assist with all the extra children. So I didn't have to worry about having um, extra staff. So that was great. So here are some ideas of other people that you can partner with. Um, talk to your town water department, uh, your state environmental services, um, your marine law enforcement, which may be a division of police or maybe um, parts and rec to see what kind of program they may have. Um, when working with your parks and rec, uh, maybe you can offer some um, story times or an activity um, before or after swimming lessons. 
Um, oh, I didn't put it on here, but um, I happened to, was, my husband was watching a bass fishing tournament or something over the weekend, and that made me think, you know, that fishing is a, a really big thing in a lot of communities. So if you happen to have a community where they maybe have some fishing championships or things like that, um, some fishing programs um, might be a good idea, as well as uh, contact your, um, your state's fish and game department. Um, they often have um, programs as well. Okay, so here we have um, aquariums and zoos are, are really kind of obvious, but um, they, I mean, and a lot of them offer virtual programs. You know, this is uh, one good thing about the uh, pandemic of all these extra virtual programs. And um, so, you don't even really need to be in a particular state to have access to um, some great uh, virtual programming from aquariums and zoos. Um, and World Ocean Day is June 8th. Um, I mentioned uh, science citizens, uh, citizen science projects on here. Um, every year we have um, a New Hampshire summer learning grant opportunity. And um, this past year, one of the Northern Libraries used the funding for a citizen science project that tested the water quality of a large river in their community. Um, so that might be something that you might want to look into as well. Okay, so how can we assist everyone in our community in living their best lives, okay? We want to really, but here comes the whole possibilities, open up the possibilities for everybody in your community. Um, visit your local senior center with your programs. Uh, for many, or for quite a few, well, it was a couple of years, I partnered with um, the wellness division of uh, a local hospital and they provided, um, programming at a real reasonable rate for me. Uh, we had programming on um, cooking, on diabetes. Yeah. So um, another asset you might want to look into in your community. And I, I put develop a community asset map, but um, the previous program probably has a lot, <laughs> a lot better resources there. <laughs> Great, and I'm seeing some Com wonderful comments. So I want to take a minute to to recognize those um, on the audio recording here for those that can't attend live um, that are going to be watching the recording. So um, uh, a suggestion that the, your local university or perhaps um, you can even check into your community colleges, to see if they have connection, but your local university might have a marine science department or fisheries department. Check check in with them. Maybe they could do a seminar or some type of collaboration. Um, Elizabeth mentioned uh, partnering with uh, a museum, a, an indigenous museum in her community and talking about water and its symbolism. I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, we have a, a landlocked uh, library that has a uh, quarry nearby and they might have a scuba diving uh, exploration and partnership with Excellent. the local scuba group. Is that awesome? That is awesome. <laughs> um, what else are we seeing here? Uh, oh yeah, um, team up with maybe a Cub Scout troop uh, and, and use the rain gutter regatta setup which I don't know what the rain gutter regatta is, but I'm sure we're librarians, we could search that out. Um, but that sounds like fun. Any type of regatta with a local cub, cub group, that'd be really fun. And then um, another person said uh, they partnered with their local area agency on aging last year and brought them, um, they brought programming. I've done that in the past as well. It's a great resource. I love that. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna jump into displays, but keep those comments coming. Uh, oh, look, people already did the research for me. <laughs> they put the links in the chat. That's wonderful. Um, so aquatic nature kit, 
is available for checkout year round at somebody's library, that's fabulous. Maybe you can work with a local nature center um, on their freshwater ponds or streams um, and getting a, a circulating kit out about that, that families could then take to the nature center. I'm just gonna throw in there, like mixing that up with a story walk, putting some, some ocean oceanography or water conservancy um, story walks up in and around your community. I, I know uh, here in New Hampshire and I, as I probably in other states, um, our state parks has a library pass and um, a lot of libraries offer backpacks with that library pass and especially uh, for some of our ones located on the seacoast, they'll have um, books for identifying um, different kind of seashells and the different uh, wildlife that they might see um, on the seacoast. And just a heads up, if anybody's wondering, Adrian, the awesome Adrian's in the background here, she's saving all these ideas from the chat. And so we will make that a additional handout um, today for everybody because we're getting such great ideas here. All right. Um, so displays, <laughs> uh, let's just dive right into those. Uh, I will tell you that I borrowed a lot of these from our own Facebook group. People are super active in there and sharing such wonderful ideas. Um, some of them I searched out myself as well, but, um, you know, Here's a couple, if you're thinking about the blue planet theme in our chapters, our big blue planet, um, help keep our oceans clean. Uh, this, this presentation today is really timely because as I was getting ready, NPR's morning edition reported that the US produces more plastic waste than any country in the world. And only 9%, and they said about 9%, of plastic waste in the US is actually recycled. So um, they also mentioned that every year, 10 million tons of plastic goes right back into the ocean. So some interactive displays, or um, these are cute, like visual displays here uh, um, that you can just use some simple netting. Um, and um, you could even, uh, the one on the left, I like that they had the youth in their community submit little like one page reports. It was probably a reading club challenge um, or a class assignment. And then um, they included that on their board as well. And while I'm chatting, please in, in the chat box, go ahead and pop in some displays you're thinking about in, uh, for everybody. Uh, here we have some more fun ones. I don't know if you all saw the Making Carol, um, Coralina, the giant paper mache whale in, uh, in our October newsletter. Luke sends those out every month. Um, I'm just going to put a link in the chat to that whale design. It's pretty fantastic. And they made it for Tales and Tales and they're planning to use it again this summer. So it was really worth their time to create that. Um, up in the upper left there, you see Denise, that's a cute one. I like, you know, a little photo opportunity there with some tails on the wall. You could do that with the octopus and the squids and the jellyfish and all that, um, where families can pose and, and become different sea animals. Um, and uh, here's a couple other whales you can see here. Um, some are, are more display and some are right there inside the whale. You can go into the belly of the whale on the bottom right from Jenny. Um, that was pretty fun to see. I'm, I'm, I believe they use some cardboard boxes uh, to create that and, and, a, and a tent. Um, <laughs> so uh, interactive displays. You're going to want um, to have a lot of these. And I already saw, because I'm watching everything. I saw somebody in the chat have had a really great interactive display and I've already lost it, but um, there it was. Sailor knots. That'd be a great passive program. You can nail some sailor walks. Well, maybe not nail, but some, some rope, tie some rope to your walls um, and then have the directions on how to create different knots. And kids, 
they'll spend hours with the rope and with string, you know, they, they love to do that sort of thing. So, um, give them a chance in a place that they can practice those knots. Um, we have a pool noodle wall here. Um, of course, cardboard cutouts are super popular. We were thinking of monitors or iPads or whatnot to have kind of virtual tours um, displayed and and always running at your library. Um, you could hide oceanography images or even Sophie Blackall's wonderful art for this year. You have access to all that artwork. You can print those out and you can hide them throughout your library, create a scavenger hunt or a bingo card um, that your kids could participate and um, and seek out those images throughout the library. Uh, counting, uh, you can, if you have stairs in your library or to the entrance of your library, you can place seahorses or other uh, animal images on the steps and do little challenges to count them or five frogs on a log, um, you know, and, and have the, the words that song there for families to sing and learn together. Um, you could do how tall on bookshelf ends. So um, I know, of course, whale might be more long. So you can also do how long is a whale across a big row of bookshelves, or you can do how tall is a seahorse compared to how tall is a swordfish. Um, that sort of display on your bookshelf ends. Um, and finally, you know, um, creating an interactive display that's that's a kind of a reading log for your family. So maybe every time they finish a book, they can write in the title on a seashell and then stack the seashell. And maybe your display is a coral reef and they can have fish and they put the fish on the on the um, display when they've read a book. All sorts of different um, display ideas. So I'm looking at the chat. So Kathy, I wanted to uh, mention you know, back when I used to be a, a real librarian and, and I was into my <laughs> rubber stamping, I always had an interactive display uh, where we kept track of the books read um, as a community. And so I could just, uh, you know, envision like something for next year would be make like a, a little aquarium you know, or it would actually have to be pretty good size. And then every time, you know, the kids came in to record their books, I'd give them some kind of fish stamp and they could, you know, stamp. They just loved stamping how many books they read onto whatever, you know, I, I had. I love it. And I'm seeing um, some, like I said, some great comments and I'm trying to scroll back to them. Um, so someone says, Christine says, uh, they plan to do an interactive scavenger hunt um, and they're gonna integrate it into their display. All weekly themes will be reflected and the hunt list will change each week. So the display stays up, but their hunt list um, changes and it's very interactive. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, oh, <laughs> Mary, I love this idea, churning, um, the inside book drop into a sea animal. So they're like putting it into the mouth of the sea animal. Um, pirate ship. Oh, go ahead, Deb. Yeah, no, go ahead. Okay, uh, a pirate ship out of a cardboard box. Um, and it is a great photo op for families. Oh, Justine, thank you. Um, Monterey Bay Aquarium has a great jellyfish live cam, so you can watch their jellyfish live. That'd be great for our, our um, monitors to display and kind of relaxing, I would think. <laughs> oh, I like this. Crystal says when patrons return their gold cards this year, we're going to make an octopus display with paper chain legs. And each time a gold card is returned, they can pick a color to see how long we can make the octopus legs. That's great. And penguins, so uh, Heidi says uh, that they're gonna use a large piece of cardboard to mark the height of different penguins because there are different penguin species and uh, the kids can stand by it and see how tall they are and compare. Oh, Justine again, chalk on the sidewalk for different lengths of whales, or you could also maybe do um, different uh, 
of scenes. So we used to do chalk the walk. I'm going to say, Deborah, you, you're still a real librarian. <laughs> you just have a different position, <laughs> but I, in my past position, um, in, we had chalk the walk and, uh, out on the library sidewalks and, and each kid could get a square or two squares or whatnot, and they get the chalk and, um, they'd get to create, uh, different scenes. So you could do some oceanic scenes and then, um, award prizes. You could have some local celebrities come judge if you want, um, or everybody, everybody gets a prize. Um, Shark tracking. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Explore.org has lots of live cams. I'm not, I'm not trying to um, distract from our presentation, but these are all such great ideas. And again, I'll just, I'll just say, this is what CSLP is all about is about sharing exactly. these ideas and developing these ideas together. And that's where our manual comes in. Actually. Um, I just got to share Allie's here this last one i'm doing a recycling challenge where we will have a goal of items to recycle and we will color in a huge octopus throughout the summer and once um, the whole thing is done they'll give each kid um, the ocean button or sticker love this oh somebody just said the goonies <laughs> yeah <laughs> have a town treasure hunt yeah all right so our manual uh, are you able to see the manual up on the screen now? I can. Okay, great. Um, so we're just going to do a quick sneak peek of the manual. Um, there are so many fun activities and we just wanted to remind you and keep putting your comments in the chat um, as we go. So just a quick reminder that um, we have some amazing people behind all this work um but we also have so many volunteers so if you watch this we've got one two three three pages of volunteers that help write these manuals so um take the time to look through it and and um we know your plates are full um and this manual really helps save some time when you're program planning and it inspires you and it and helps get you excited. So just a quick note that the table of contents kind of looks like this. You can see how it's broken out by chapter. Um, and the page numbers the activities go with that, but we also do a table of contents by age group. So if you simply work with that zero to five early literacy rate age range, here are the page numbers you would go to for that. Um, so that's really helpful um, if you're just tweens and teens, then you could look at um, that age group. Um, and then within each chapter, um, there is another table of contents that again echoes what the different uh, topics are. So here's an example of the early literacy page. Um, and it includes books that you can use and you can see the tips on the side. There's also wonderful um, printouts. So all this work is done for you. You don't need to worry about, um, about that. Uh, children's activity, again, it tells you what materials and prep you need to do. You don't have to follow these by the letter. You know your community and your patrons best. And so this is an opportunity for you to, um, to just be supported um, and to use these, these pages as a jumping off point. So again, materials, resources. So don't forget there are book lists. There's book lists at the end of the entire manual, but at the end of also included um, within each activity. How are we doing on time? Are we have five more minutes? I believe. Yes, correct. Five minutes. Yeah, we're Thank doing you. All right. So um, here's the example of tweens, teens, and adults. If you haven't seen this manual before, you can see that those are the um, tabs at the top to help you flip through the chapters. Um, but again, this is just a starting point. You're not wed to it if it's if it doesn't say children, but you think of a way to adapt it for youth. Feel free to do that. Um, oh, we didn't, 
this would be a cool display or a craft, these nautical flags. Um, my nephew was able to make a shirt um, with his name, his initials actually spelled out in nautical flags. And he was, he just thought it was the coolest thing. And then when he went to school, he's middle school at the time, um, all his friends thought that it was pretty sweet too. Uh, so adults, uh, they're, you know, there are programs in there for adults too. And I don't know if you've noticed in the manuals, they also suggest run times. Um, oh, here's the role playing game that I mentioned along um, earlier in our presentation. Early literacy also has um, some uh, Spanish translations um, for programming and rhymes and songs. Um, I'm not gonna go through this whole thing. But I pulled out a few pages so that you could see that they also have um, images and, and things that you can use in your programming to share with, with the kids. So, or your families. So that was your quick little sneak peek. Um, we want to remind you that uh, CSLP is on social media. And um, I said, back at the beginning that the, um, even if you have a paper or USB manual, you do have access to the online manual and Luke will be adding additional materials that come to him. So for like example, in Michigan, we um, offer uh, reading logs and we create those usually in, in the spring uh, for libraries using the theme art. I'll then submit that to Luke and he'll put it up in the shared resources uh, additional upload section of the manual for anyone um, who's a CSLP member. So um, be sure to talk to your state rep. Again, if somebody can pop that state rep link in the chat, uh, that'd be helpful. But we're going to move on to our questions. And we're not, I don't know if you've seen very many questions, Adrian. I see a lot of great ideas. It was uh, some links to um, interactive um, scripts like the Goonies that was in there. That would be yes. fun. I haven't noticed any uh, outright questions, no, um, that I haven't been able to answer in the Q&A. Um, just lots and lots of great ideas. Yes. Thanks. Um, yeah, there were, um, I think there was just one other thing people mentioned um, maybe watching movies outside of their libraries. I just want to make sure that you check with your movie licensing just to make sure you can show something outside of your library walls. And um, somebody mentioned hiring a dowser. And so I did put that in the chat. There's an actual organization of dowsers that may help may be able to help you find somebody in your community or in your state. Um, and making ink pads. Um, I did just a simple Google search and you can make your own ink pads. So if you can't find any that you can purchase online, then you make your own. And then corks, um, if you, <laughs> uh, you can find them at craft stores and on Amazon. And uh, thank you, Miriam, for putting that suggestion on into the chat. Wonderful, thanks, Adrian. And I'll just say, oh, Adrian's been collecting all these ideas in the chat and we'll share that with um, along with our slides and this recording when those are up. Um, and, and, you know, we really didn't um, put a, um, a, I don't, I know how to word this, but we didn't put a ton of ideas in this presentation because this is the fun that I know you all have doing. Um, that's why we have different themes every summer. It's to inspire us, right, as, as librarians um, and to get out there and do our programming um, and have fun doing it. And so check out this manual. Um, it is really um, come a long way from the old, like 1990s, uh, early 2000s <laughs> manual, and um, which we're great because uh, that was pre, you know, Pinterest. <laughs> um, and so now we've got 
other supports in the Facebook group and everything to continue our brainstorming. But please, um, please do check out that manual as well. And then these slides and these ideas will be available online. So, and without any other questions, I think I, I saw somebody you. say they're, they're feeling inspired. Yay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing so much in the chat. Yes, if we if we could, we do breakout rooms, but a thousand plus people, that's a little bit hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do connect with your state rep um, if you want additional information. We did have one more question in the Q and A. Um, they want to know how long the resources on the symposium link will remain available once they're up. And I don't think we have any plans to take them down anytime soon, just FYI. So you should have plenty of time, probably at least till the you know summer reading is over. Um, for sure, we wouldn't take them down. So don't stress too much. Wonderful. 